What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel, where my goal is to help folks learn Linux and break into the tech field. And today we're diving into a distro that's been around a block, but has kept its roots strong. And that's Crunchbane++. Now, if you've been in the Linux game for a while, you might remember Crunchbang, which was discontinued back in 2015. But the good news is that the project was revived and we now have Crunchbang++ and the current version is 12. And that means that it's built on top of Debian 12 Bookworm. And one thing about the distro, it brings that lightweight, minimalistic goodness we've loved from the original, but with a few modern tweaks. So in today's video, we'll take a close look at what this new version offers, why it's worth considering if you like keeping things light and fast, and how it stays true to the crunch bang philosophy. So let's dive in. All right, so what exactly is crunch bang plus plus 12? Well, let me hop over to the web and show you guys a little bit of the history. Now, if you've never heard of Crunchbang before, it's basically a minimalistic, lightweight Linux distro that has been around for quite a while. And I'm actually at the site for crunchbang.org. Originally, it was created by Philip Newborough, but he officially ended the project in 2015. But guess what? The community revived it under a new name and actually two different names, two different projects. As you can see right here, Crunchbang++, which is the one we want to look at today. I already have the link open for it. And then also Bunsen Labs Linux. So I'll check this one out at a later date, but we're definitely going to check out Crunchbang++ today. But at its core, it's all about keeping things sleek and efficient. And its latest version continues to carry the torch with this Debian 12 base. So you get a solid, stable foundation plus access to newer software, security patches, and performance improvements. Now let's talk about a little bit of the features right fast. First off, it's still lightweight, perfect for older machines that might struggle to run heavier distros. I mean, we're talking about a Debian 12 base with the latest Linux 6.1 kernel and GTK4 support. So you're getting the modern package and improvements you'd expect in 2024, but without the blow. Now, one thing I wanted to point out since I've been playing with it for the last couple of days, they've also added a new dark theme, which I know a lot of you guys love, especially me. I mean, who doesn't like dark mode these days? But this new look extends to the open box theme as well, keeping it stylish, but still functional. And if you're used to Crunchbang's old school vibe, you'll be glad to know that they've kept the original experience largely unchanged with some under the hood tweaks to ensure everything runs smoothly with modern hardware. Overall, if you're looking for something small, fast and efficient, especially if you're running older hardware or you just prefer simplicity, Crunchbang++12 is definitely worth checking out. So that's enough about the distro. You guys should understand the history of it now. And we can go down and hit that download button. I can show you guys how to install it right fast, but it's a torrent file. All you have to do is click download here. If you want the 64 bit or the 32 bit, you got your MD5 hashes to check to verify you're getting it from the right location. And just so you guys know, the IS is about 2.7 gigs and it only takes a couple seconds. They have a, a couple C boxes out there seeding the ISO. You shouldn't have a problem getting it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Now, one other thing I want to point out, if you go over to the GitHub page, it walks you through how to build your own ISO. So if you want to go through and build out your own ISO and they show you how to do it, it says it's easiest and very tidy to use Docker. So you use Docker and it'll build out your own ISO and you'll be good to go. But you can just quickly download it if you want to go through that process. Now, let's switch over to my virtual machine so we can get this thing installed and we can play around with the system a little bit. All right. So we're booted up into the live ISO. I'm going to quickly walk you guys through the install. So all you have to do is hit continue here, select your language, select your location, your keyboard. Super simple installer. Doesn't take long at all because the operating system is not too big. The ISO is 2.7 gigs, but it's not that bad overall. 
being that it doesn't install much. Once you get into the operating system, it will ask you to install a lot of software. And I'll show you guys that once we get to that step. I'm gonna just name it Crunch and let's hit continue there. No domain name, it's fine. Configure our uh, account. So I'm gonna just name my account Josh. Hit continue, username is fine. Let's go on and type in our super strong password right, and then type it in twice. Hit continue, select your clock. So basically your location. So Pacific for me, I'm on the West Coast. Now it's gonna ask you to configure the drives, which I'm just use the entire disk. But you do have the option for LVM as well as LVM and encryption. And then you can also manually configure your drives if you want to. So let's hit continue there. We're gonna select the actual disk itself. Probably seen this in the past on other distros, but you can separate your home, your home drive into a separate partition. Some people do that, especially if they hop around distros a lot, so they could just move their home directory over to another system and everything will be working. So the partition is separated from the operating system. You can also do the home board and temp. Some people partition those out as well, but we're gonna leave it all on one partition. Let's go down hit next. And then here is the continue. I believe we are done at this point. It's gonna have another pop-up, I believe. And so I'll be back when it's close to finishing, but I know there is a process that happens once we get the operating system installed. So I'll definitely walk you guys through that as well. All right, cool. So I know there's one more step. So this is setting up the mirrors and you can use a network mirror. That's fine. Hit continue. You can specify your location this way. You can pick the closest mirror to you. I'm gonna just pick the closest one here in the US. Now it's gonna configure apps for us. Now it's going to install Grub automatically for you. You don't have to select anything in order to get Grub installed. It'll go on and install it for you. And so I'll be back when it finishes. All right. So we have the operating system installed. So all you got to do is hit continue. That's why I had my face hidden a little earlier so you can see the buttons. But right behind my face, it says continue. So we could just hit that and it will reboot the system. And then it's going to go through somewhat of a start screen. And this is where you can select all your different packages you want installed on the operating system once it boots up. So I'll walk you guys through that. And then one other thing, it may take a little getting used to if you're not accustomed to using a window manager, but this one uses open box is super simple to use. You just have to play around with it and you'll get used to it. I installed this on one of my laptops just to use it as a daily driver for when I was doing things on my laptop and it worked out pretty well. It just takes a little bit getting used to if you've never used one of these window managers, but you got your right click. That's one cool thing about it. You got your right click that will always help you. So let's type Josh for my username and then our password that we set up in the install and boom, there we go. And so, like I said, it's a window manager. And one cool thing about it, what they put on here is basically shortcuts. So as long as you can see these shortcuts, I wouldn't recommend you changing it at least you know, for a while, I know that saved me a lot while playing around with the operating system, just trying to learn it, but they do have the shortcuts here. This will help you out. And I may run into some problems. I'm not hundred percent sure within a virtual machine. I was using the shortcuts a lot on my laptop that I had it installed on. So they worked fine because it was directly on the hardware. Sometimes spice works. Sometimes it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to using shortcuts, sometimes it'll manipulate my, my main system. I've even recorded a video and hit a shortcut on the virtual machine. And maybe I was, you know, outside of the virtual machine. I'm not 100% sure, but it shut down my system while I was recording. So I lost the video and I had to redo it. So just be careful with it. You know what I'm saying? I, and I know you guys are not doing what I'm doing as far as recording and got all this stuff set up. So it might be a little hard for me to show, you know, the shortcuts. That's what, I, that's what I'm getting to. Now, like I said, it's a welcome screen. It'll go through, you know, welcome you to CrunchBang++. This is an optional post installation script and it'll go through and install everything for you. So all you have to do is press any button that'll move you on to the next step. And it's going to basically go through the routine of updating the system. And as you can see, it's 12 screens that will pop up. It'll take you through. So if you want to skip this, you can say like, no, and it'll go down and stop the welcome screen and all these steps. But I'm going to run through a few of them so you guys can see them. But I'm going to type yes. This will update the system. And let's go on and type in our pseudo passwords. Press enter. That'll go on and install our updates. And looks like I typed it in wrong. Oh, I forgot I used it. The other super strong password. There we go. All right. So we get to go. Then this is the upgrade. So all you got to do is type Y or press enter because it's the default. Whenever it's that capital Y, that means it's the default. So all you got to do is press enter. I'm so used to typing Y that I type it without thinking about it, but you could have just press enter. While this is going, let's go down and modify the desktop. Let me show you guys a little bit of this. So if we right click, 
this will take us to all our settings that's why i say as long as you got that right click with a menu that'll pop up you're good to go so you ain't really got to worry about these shortcuts that much this will get you to any and everything you need so you open up a new terminal but one cool thing i saw they're using terminator and i like terminator it's super cool but let's see if we can modify our display settings i know i could do it through the command line let's see if we can use this all right i believe the last time i looked at this you got to go into outputs then virtual one there we go so resolution let's go down and get it in a resolution that you guys can see it a little bit better and press enter there we go so we got it a little bit better i may have to adjust it yeah i'm gonna have to fix it on my recorder at a later time but yeah that's the best i can get it right now so that's essentially how you change the display a little different of an application it's not like where you can just go into the settings and that's what makes this distro unique it uses a window manager and window managers are not that difficult to use to begin with but still it's a little bit different it makes you feel as though you're in a linux distro which is what you want instead of that whole windows you know look and that's another reason i like xfce because the way i have it set up it doesn't remind me of windows at all and so that's what i look for in a desktop environment especially with the way it's set up i really like the different looks and also i don't like it when it looks like mac os i'm not a mac user i don't even have a mac system i'll just use strictly linux you know for all my systems now the systems that i use for work that's another story you know they're windows based obviously but it's not that difficult to use you know what i'm saying but you can go through here you can run programs you got your terminal web browser let's see what the default web browser is and we got firefox that's cool uh, i'm not gonna even open it up and see you got your file manager i forget what it's called up in here let's see thunor ah they took it from xfce that's what i'm talking about you know what i'm saying so thunor is in here and i couldn't remember everything but oh genie genie yeah I've used Genie before as a text editor, and these are kind of like your default applications, but in order to find everything, you can go down under these menus right up in here. You got Catfish File Search, Archive Manager, Task Manager. Let's look at the Task Manager, which is just HTOP. So let's open that up. They'll open up a terminal. They'll get you straight to HTOP. Uh, I only got one core running on this thing, and I gave it like eight gigs of memory. I knew it didn't need much. It's running at 100%, but whatever. This is, like I said, this is a virtual machine that's gonna get thrown away pretty soon not thrown away but delete it but you got you know crash report for firefox let's quit it that's probably because i closed it too soon but anyway you got gimp on here you got a lot of cool software on here by default video player vlc office it comes with libre oh actually you have to install libre office i forgot that's kind of like a placeholder because that's one of the options in here or one of the pages in here in a welcome screen so you can install libre office but that's just a holder because most likely you're going to want LibreOffice on here, especially if you plan on using this as your daily system. Let's see, Google Docs, I mean, Word, Word Processor. I don't even know what that is. Generic Spreadsheets, Calculator, PDF Viewer. So, and hold on, that's all into my face. Let me go down and get over here. So you guys kind of see a little bit better. So places, you know, you got all your typical places. That's how you get into your file system. Recent files, so once you start opening files, they'll show up there. And actually, let me close this because it looks kind of busy with htop running let's see what else we got in here so settings you got compositor conkey d menu open box settings that's the settings display settings which we went into <laughs> notification let's see edit default applications power management screensaver choose a wallpaper if you want a different one. Oh, and i forgot this is conky right here this is conky i'm sorry that's not the background that one i misspoke earlier that's conky that's port of conky right there anyway let's see you got system you got printer settings so pretty much you can do whatever you need to do on this system. I know this probably seems uh, very minimal, which is a good thing. It's one of their strengths. You know what I'm saying? So you got Synaptic Package Manager on here as well, so you can install all your software. But let's go through a little bit more. Like right here, it is asking for printer support if you want to. So I'm going to skip that. And let's see if it takes, yeah, Java. So if you want Java support, I'm going to hit no. I just want to show you guys a few other things. Let's see. Libre if you want to. So I'm going to hit no right there. But that's how you install Libre. I install development packages. Now, this is a uh, recommended packages for people that are used to developing software or want to use it. So it's less common, you know, use packages. So I'm gonna just type no, but this will end the welcome. And you know, once we press in and press enter, that'll end it. So finish, we're good to go. It'll skip the rest of the steps. If you hit yes, it'll take you through the rest of them, but that's all we need to do. And now our system is up and ready to go. Now let's talk about my personal take on this distribution. I'm a huge fan of what the developers have done with Crunchbang plus plus. It's always been a distro that knew exactly what it wanted to be like no frills, just pure efficiency. 
and it doesn't try to do too much. And that's honestly its strength. And in a world where distros are constantly adding more features, more eye candy, and basically more bloat and overhead, CrunchBang++ keeps it lean and clean. Now, one thing I really appreciate is how Debian 12 forms the backbone of this distro. Debian is one of the most reliable bases you can build on, and having that stability while keeping the lightweight nature of CrunchBang is a perfect combination. Plus, it's not like you're sacrificing modern features either. Like I said, that new GTK 4.0 support ensures you're able to run updated applications, as well as the Linux 6.1 kernel, which brings in a lot of performance improvements. Now, another thing I find that's dope is how this distro can bring old machines back to life. I don't know if you guys remember back in the earlier days of my channel, I used to always talk about distros that were good to use on old systems because I always like to recycle systems like majority of the servers I had back in the day were bought off of Craigslist and I would fix them up, put some new hard drives in it if I needed to spin it up. It doesn't matter if it's an old chip. I spin it up and repurpose it and use a Linux operating system. On. But if you got an old laptop laying around and just want to repurpose it as an old desktop, well, I think you should check out CrunchBang++ because it's smooth, fast, and doesn't hog resources. In fact, even if you're a modern hardware user, I can see why some people prefer to run this. It's just that efficient. And one thing I didn't get to was the dork mode, but as you can see, it's already mostly dork. But that is a nice touch. It's definitely easier on the eyes, especially for those long coding or study sessions at night. And I would recommend people that are going to school for IT or cybersecurity and you have a system that you don't mind wiping windows off of or backing up windows and installing Linux on there. So you can always go back to Windows if you need to. But I recommend you check out this distro. If you got a laptop while you're in school and you want to have a Linux distro that's different and set up for programming or doing a lot of learning this is definitely one of those distros you can look into now if i had to nitpick i would say that this distro is probably not for everyone because if you're someone who likes tons of flashy features or customization out of the box you might find crunch bang plus plus a bit too bare bones but for those of us who like to keep things simple and fast it's pretty much perfect all right guys so that wraps up my look at crunch bang plus plus 12 as always, I encourage you to give it a try, especially if you're running older hardware or just love a minimal setup. Like I said, it's lightweight, fast, and doesn't sacrifice on modern features. I mean, what more could you ask for? Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share this with someone who might be looking for a new distro to check out. Also, drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about Crunch Bang Plus Plus or if there are any other distros you want me to cover. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep it techy. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.